Hop House 13. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Birds Reviews. I swore I'd never do this, but I'm going to review Hop House 13. Now, this was Guinness's response to the craft brewing um, explosion, if you like, and the hoppiness of all the new beers that were coming out. They decided to bring out their own hopped lager. Um, it's named after a a house, or well not a house, but a hut that would stored all the hops for Guinness, and it was called Hop House 13. And they saw fit to call one of their lagers, well, they one of their first lagers. They also do a pilsner as well. Um, I should review that as well. But it was, um, it was basically their response to the craft brewing revolution. They thought they had to get on board with it. Um, to be fair, it's taken off with all the. Um, you know, the with spoons change, you can always get a pop of, like, sort of pint of this on draft. Um, I've tried it once years ago and I thought it was shit. I'm going to reevaluate it now. And reading up on it, it's saying that, oh, it's um, full of, you know, aroma. Um, it's got all fruity notes like apricot and stuff like that. I don't know whether it has or not, but... I don't know whether you can even brew a beer in the quantities they do. I mean, Guinness sales went up 2% after they started brewing this. Now, Guinness was a really popular drink. They're owned by, is it Diego? Or Diego, I can't pronounce it, but they're owned by them, who are a massive you know, brewing conglomerate. But uh, this has increased their sales by 2%. Maybe through the, the Witherspoon store, you know, the Witherspoon's pubs chain because they all sell them and all that. I've never seen anybody buy a pint of it. I've never tasted it on draft. I'm just going to try this now in the safety of my own home. Uh, here is the cap. It's just a simple number 13. There you go. There's not 13 hops in here. They use Australian hops in here. They use Topaz and um, something else as well. I can't remember the other name of the Australian hop. But they're, they're Aussie hops, basically. So, on the nose, what are we getting? <sighs> Fucking hell. Right, after the initial general nastiness, which you do get with macro brew beer, there's very, very slight lemon citrus, sulphur, and not a lot else. I'm really struggling to get anything out of there, so let's get this in the glass and see what's, uh, what's in the bowl. So this is a this is a supposedly hopped lager. Um, I mean, look at that. That's an amber colour. I mean, look at the carbonation on this. Look at them bubbles here. That usually should ring alarm bells. The foamy head as well. There, everything about that says bad beer. Now. I could be completely wrong and try this and love it. But the signs are there. What's in the nose? Again, I'm really struggling to get anything. Very, very faint malt. And that's about it, really. I mean, that's about as bad as it can get. You can see that, look, loads of big bubble carbonation. For a lager, it looks very dark indeed. A pilsner, I would probably say that doesn't look too bad, but yeah. Right, wish me luck, I'm gonna dive in. Cheers.
there is vague faint hoppiness in this and some lemon citrus as well but the aftertaste is like burnt sugar which to me is just malt that's been you know bad quality malt that's been um, you know hastily roasted it's not giving it a great Moorish aftertaste and there is fruity notes in that but you know what they say about the beer I have to say it, it is there there are fruity notes on it but it's really uninspiring as you would expect from a a macro brewed beer Carbonation seems to have settled down now. Do you know whether you can see that or not? The, the bubbles are a lot more smaller and they don't have that. You know, when I first, the first mouthful I took, it was just like, whoa. It was like a, not a party in your mouth. If you, can, if you can imagine a party where a mass fight breaks out, that's what it was like in your mouth. It's just fucking, it reminded me of Erdinger. You know what that? them huge levels of carbonation to increase the shelf life. That's what they've done here. It's weird, they're saying there's a, there's like a f sort of fruity notes on it. There, there sort of is, but as soon as that goes, the mixture of that bad malt and the I imagine there's some sugar in that as well. Um, it's just giving it a sort of a, a rotten vegetable type flavour. It's not skunky because it doesn't. It, I will say that it doesn't smell skunky. They put it in a, a brown bottle as well, so you, you know, they got that right at least. But um, I really don't see where there is a sort of a market for this. Obviously, people drink it because it's increased sales by 2%. Um, I don't know whether people think they're getting a craft beer drinking this. I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe they're just thinking it's another lager. Maybe it's just better than Carling and Carlsberg and Heineken, which to be fair, you know, it is, but not a lot. Having said that, it is slightly drinkable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't chuck this down the sink and say never again. But I'd never go out of my way to buy this again. If somebody handed me this I'd, and there was nothing else, I'd say it's it's got that burnt sugar, which you know. I see a lot of this in the, or taste a lot of this in the, the macro brewed, um, supposed craft brew stuff that comes out of Marston's, you know, for the supermarkets. And I'm getting that, that horrible burnt sugar taste afterwards. But it's not as strong as it is in, with the supposed craft, I hate doing this shit, supposed craft do, Supposed, supposed craft brew stuff. Um, what would I give it? <sighs> it's really uninspiring. Not flavoursome at all. It's just, just boring and bland. It's not the worst one out there, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't inspire me to go out and buy another beer. I've always debated whether to review these beers because you know it could usually it it results in me going on a rant and I don't really I really don't want to do that because it makes me come across as some sort of fucking beer snob you know and yeah there's people that buy this and there's people that like this and if they enjoy it who am I to say that this is shit and they're wrong but if you take it into context and you look at Use music as a simile, you know, 
and someone likes fucking boys own and I like what I like I'm going to tell them that boys own shit and I won't be convinced otherwise and this is the bare equivalent of boys own it's fucking boring it's uninspiring and in a world without music what would you rather do listen to the silence sound of silence or would you rather listen to boys own oh to be fair no, Boys Own is an extreme. Think of Meatloaf. Now, I fucking hate Meatloaf, but if there was never, ever going to be any other music in the world, I'd rather listen to Meatloaf than Boys Own. How the fuck have I got onto Meatloaf and Boys Own reviewing Hop House 13? See, this is what the shit beer does to me. And I'm going to rent now, and this is why I'm going to stop. So, the mark out of 10. Two out of 10. Would I recommend it? No, if you're watching this channel, you obviously know your beers, so you're not gonna drink this shit. Um, if anyone wants to, you know, buy it and try it, yeah, do so. I'd advise sticking it in the freezer till it's ice cold, till you can't taste anything, drink it on a hot day when you're absolutely gasping, and then never drink it again, because that would be the only time I would ever drink this stuff again. It's just boring, it's bland, and it's Guinness's attempt to get onto the craft beer and think they're doing something radical, when in the reality is they're not, not really. They're using a, a few Australian hops in it. I mean, for fuck's sake, so what? It's just got a little, a little bit of a flowery, fruity type overtone and then you've got that horrible burnt sugar aftertaste which just ruins everything you know if you didn't have that i'd say you know maybe maybe i'll give it a five out of ten for that but that horrible i don't know a horrible burnt sugar if there was a nice biscuit ball on the end of that which for a lager you know just use some fucking german i don't know pills and malts or something like that anyway this is where i'm going to stop because i'm going to go into a rent and uh, Anyway, 2 out of 10, not recommended. And remember, I'm drinking this shit so you don't have to.